And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of... The Telltale Heart. I had nothing against the man. I didn't want his money. And those who say I did are crazy. He was always agreeable and liked me. But there was one thing about him that bothered me. That eye. That eye of his. That pale blue vulture eye. Why did you do it? <laughs> that, that voice. It's always with me. It's always with me. Why did you? Why did you do it? Listen. Can't you hear it? So rhythmic, beating, beating. It's with me. It follows me wherever I go. The pounding of his heart. The pounding, beating rhythm of the telltale heart. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Telltale Heart. And now for our story. Adapted for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled The Telltale Heart. Yes? Uh, there was an advertisement in the paper. I'm here to answer it. I see. Won't you come in, please? Yes, thank you. Are you the one I'm supposed to see? No, I'm Mrs. Gorman, the housekeeper. Mr. Lawrence, the old gentleman, he's the one you ought to see. You'll just wait here. I'll tell him you're here. Yes, thank you, of course. Mr. Lawrence? Yes? Someone here and asked for the advertisement you placed in the paper. Uh, send him in, Mrs. Gorman. Sir, Mr. Lawrence will see you now. Thank you. He's over by the desk, sir. Yes, ma'am, I see him. Thank you. You come in answer to the advertisement in the paper? Yes, sir. You care to sit down? No. No, I'll stand, thank you. What's your name? Uh, Crowther. David Crowther. Aside from my housekeeper, Mr. Crowther, I live here by myself. I feel the need of a companion. Someone to whom I can talk. Mrs. Gorman is a housekeeper. She doesn't talk very much. Very competent person, but very uncommunicative. You have references, I suppose? No, Mr. Lawrence, I, I haven't. Oh. Uh, what work have you been doing? I'll be completely honest with you, Mr. Lawrence. I, I haven't been working for the past year. I was only released from the hospital two weeks ago. I noticed you looked rather pale. Are you well now? Oh, yes. I've completely recovered. Well, uh, you don't have references. I don't know. Uh, please, Mr. Lawrence... I need employment. My money is all gone, and I must work in order to live. I see. What about your family? I have no family. No other attachments? No, sir. I'm going to take a chance on you, Mr. Crowther. Thank you, of sir. Of course, your salary won't be too large. But you'll have a roof over your head and plenty of food to eat. When can you start? Tonight, if you like, Mr. Lawrence. Excellent. You know, Mr. Crowther, David, if I may call you that. Yes, sir. I have the feeling that we're going to get along quite well together. I was with him for several months. I don't know when the idea first entered my mind. But once it was there, it haunted me day and night. It enveloped my brain with its cunning. I had nothing against the man. He was always agreeable and liked me. But there was one thing about him that bothered me. That I, that I of his... One day I asked the housekeeper about it. Mrs. Gorman. Yes, David? Uh, the old gentleman. One of his eyes. Is there anything wrong with it? What? Oh, I don't think so, David. 
I hadn't noticed. To me, one of his eyes resembles that of a vulture. Pale blue it is with a cloudy film covering it. It didn't bother me at first. And, well, in fact, it doesn't bother me now unless he looks at me, but... Unless he looks at you? Why? Well, every time he looks at me, my blood runs cold. That pale blue vulture eye... I think I... you're imagining things, David. <laughs> Yes, yes, Mrs. Gorman. Perhaps I am imagining things. You won't say anything about it to Mr. Lawrence, will you? Of course not, David. <laughs> I don't know what came over me. Of course, there's nothing wrong with the old gentleman. Nothing at all. <laughs> yes, but there was. That eye of his. That pale blue vulture eye. Little by little, I began to hate him with all my heart. One evening, a few weeks later, the old man and I sat in the living room. We had just finished dinner and we were talking as we usually did. <laughs> just as you say, Mr. Lawrence, we'll have to wait and... And, well, what are you looking at? What, David? Are you staring at me? No, of course not. Yes, you are. Don't look at me like that. I'm not looking. Don't look at me. Turn it away. Turn it away. Turn your eye away. David. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. On your eye. It's like a vulture's. A few days passed. And I guess he thought I had forgotten about his eye. <laughs> but I hadn't. No, I hadn't. And every night about midnight... I'd get out of bed, creep from my room to his. I'd unlatch the door and open it. And then, after it was opened wide enough to stick my head through, I would put in a covered lantern all closed so that no light would shine forth. <laughs> and after I had my head in the room, I would undo the lantern so that only... A single ray of light darted out. And I would shine it on his face to see if his eye were open. But no, it never was. Not then. I found the eye always closed. And you see, that made it impossible to do my work. For it wasn't the old man that bothered me. But his eye. His evil eye. Unless his eye were open, I couldn't do it. <laughs> but I knew that one night it would happen. Yes, it would open, and then I could do it. Then I could kill him. <laughs> Back now to our story, adapted especially for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled The Telltale Heart. So I waited. I went out of my way to make him comfortable. I made sure that I never mentioned anything about his eye to him. And every morning I would go into his chamber boldly and ask him, Well, Mr. Lawrence, did you sleep well last night? Why, uh, yes, David, I did. You didn't hear anything? Uh, any noises? No, not a one. I'm glad of that. Why? Did you hear anything? No, 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 not a thing. And why did you ask me if I had? Oh, I was just asking, Mr. Lawrence. I wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure. And he thought everything was all right. He was a fool. Just like all the others. <laughs> well, how could he know? Yes, how could he know that every night on the stroke of twelve, I looked in upon him as he slept. <laughs> No, David, I didn't sleep very well last night. You didn't, Mr. Lawrence? No, I had a bad dream. Oh? What did you dream about? I dreamt that someone was looking in at me while I slept. Just waiting for a chance to kill me. Well, that's just a dream, Mr. Lawrence. Nothing to worry about, you know that. Yes, I... I guess it was just a dream. <laughs> because the only people here are Mrs. Gorman, myself, and... Neither one of us would hurt you. You know that, don't you, Mr. Lawrence? Yes. I'm glad you're both with me, David. Just the same. I can't 
can't seem to get rid of that feeling. It frightens me. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Lawrence. No, don't worry. I'll take care of you. On the eighth and last night, I took special pains to make sure he wouldn't hear me. A watcher's minute hand moved more quickly than did mine. I crept out into the hallway, made my way to his door. His room was all black, black as coal, black as midnight. I think he heard me, but I knew he couldn't see a thing. <laughs> the room was too dark for that. I was almost in the room and about to open my lantern when my thumb slipped upon the tin fastening and the old man was immediately fully awake. He sat upright in bed and whispered, Who's there? He said, Who's there? I kept still. I didn't say a thing. No, not a thing. And for what seemed like an hour, I stood there and didn't move a muscle. I knew he wouldn't lie down. He was sitting up in his bed listening. Listening for what it was that had made the noise. <laughs> the old man was in mortal fear. When I had waited a long time... And still had not heard him lie back upon his bed. I resolved to open my lantern a little. Yes, just a little. Just the tiniest bit. And presently, the tiniest bit of light struggled out. I directed it towards him like the thread of a spider. And finally, it came to rest upon his vulture eye. And then... I seemed to hear something. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't distinguish it at first, and I racked my mind to think of what it was. And then finally it came to me. Yes, that was it. It was the beating of the old man's heart. Who is in here? I could hear it distinctly. He was so afraid. Beat, 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 beat. It went. I could feel its rhythm. The old man was in mortal terror. But I held the lantern motionless. I tried to keep the beam of the light focused on that terrible eye, that pale blue vulture's eye. The incessant drumbeat of his heart increased. It grew quicker and quicker. Beat, beat, beat. Louder, louder every moment. The old man's terror must have been extreme. In that, I thought of something else. The sound of his heart was so loud it might be heard by someone else, by Mrs. Gorman, by some prying neighbor. And I couldn't allow that, could I? No. And the beating grew louder and louder and louder until I could stand it no longer. Who's there? Don't be afraid, old man. Is that you, David? Yes, that's right. It's only me. Nothing to be afraid of. What are you doing in my room? Just watching over you, Mr. Lawrence. I thought it was someone else. You have nothing to fear from me, old man. But you should be asleep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll go to sleep. And so will you, old man. So will you. David, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing, old man. Nothing at all. Don't come any closer, Jimmy. Stay away from me. Die, old man. Die. Let your heart die with you. Let it go. Die. Die. Close your eye. That vulture eye. Close it forever. <laughs> stood there in the darkness, looking down upon him. He was quiet now. Strange kind of stillness was upon him. <laughs> For he was dead. His eye would trouble me no longer, and I knew that I had to dispose of the body, and I racked my brain to think of a place, and then it came to me. Yes, I pulled three cords from the floor. I had to work quickly. The blackest of night was fast changing to gray. I placed his body under the flooring very neatly, and then I boarded it up again. <laughs> I did it so well that even I could hardly recognize the spot under which the body was hidden. Yes, his room looked as if nothing had happened. The striking of the town clock made me realize how late it was. Well, the job was over, and no one would ever be the wiser. <gasps> Who's there? Mrs. Gorman. 
Uh, just a moment. Yes. Yes, what is it? Where's Mr. Lawrence? He's not here. Not here? No, no, he... He went out to the country late this evening. I heard something up here. Such as... A scream. No one screamed, Mrs. Gorman. I, I guess I was mistaken. I'll have to send them back then. Who? I was afraid when I woke up I heard or... Or I thought I heard a scream. You didn't hear a thing. Mr. Lawrence has been gone for some time. What are you doing up here? I wanted to make sure he hadn't forgotten anything. What you probably heard, Mrs. Gorman, was the neigh of the horse as the carriage carried Mr. Lawrence away. Then I... I must tell him to go. Who? Who's downstairs? Who is it? Well, I... I was frightened. I called the police. Huh. They're waiting for you downstairs. For both you and Mr. Lawrence. <laughs> Now to our story, adapted especially for radio by Richard Thorne, entitled The Telltale Heart. I was so sure that no one had heard anything. But Mrs. Gorman, the housekeeper, she must have heard him scream. Or did she hear the beating of the old man's heart? I went downstairs with her. Here's Mr. Crowther, officer. Thank you. Will you be needing me anymore? No, I don't think so. Good night, then. Well, what can I do for you gentlemen? You'll have to pardon us, sir, for disturbing you. We received a complaint from your housekeeper about some strange noises she heard. Oh, she must be mistaken, officer. Nothing's happened here. The housekeeper said she heard a scream from upstairs. Oh, she must have been dreaming. Perhaps. But I hope you'll excuse us, sir, if we take a look through the house. Why, certainly, officer. I have nothing to hide. Uh, well, where do you want to start, gentlemen? If you'll just show us around. With pleasure. Just follow me. I led them from room to room. I took them all over the house. I wanted to show them I had nothing to hide. I showed them every nook and cranny in the uh, place except the old man's room. Well, I wanted to say that to last. <laughs> Finally, I took them into his room. And though they searched it exhaustively, they found nothing. I was quite pleased with myself. That housekeeper of yours must have imagined she heard a scream from up here. Probably just a nightmare. Well, perhaps what she heard was me. I, uh, yes, I had a nightmare, and I think it, well, I might have been the one she heard. Well, there you are. That's a simple explanation of it. <laughs> yeah, I, always, I often have nightmares. You know. We uh, ought to go to her room and tell your housekeeper. Don't worry about it, Tom. It wasn't her fault. Yes. Well, as a matter of fact, how will she know who made the noise? She said there was a, a Mr. Lawrence living here, too. Oh, yes. Where is he now? Oh, he... He isn't here. Well, that's evident. But where is he? Well, he... He went out to the country for a few weeks. He left tonight. I see. Uh, sorry to have troubled you, sir. No trouble at all, officer. Well, let's get out of here, Ed. We're keeping this gentleman up. Now, if you gentlemen won't think it presumptuous, uh, won't you have a glass of wine with me? I know how it is after you've been up all night. And... Oh, I don't know, sir. We're not supposed to drink while we're on duty. Ah, but, Ed, we're... Uh, we're almost through. Let's have a glass of wine. When we finish here, we can go home. Yes, yes, do have some wine. All right, it's a pleasure. All right, I'll get it for you. And Mr. Lawrence always kept a decanter and glasses on that table. Did you say kept, sir? <laughs> a slip of the tongue, officer. <laughs> the hour is late, you know. Uh, don't mind that, Mr. Crowther. He's suspicious of everybody. <laughs> yes, of course. Well, that's your job. Well, here we are. I hope you like sherry. Mm-hmm. Always have it at home. <laughs> Good. Glad to hear that. Well, here's yours, sir. Thank you. And yours. Thanks. There. Well, shall we drink to something, gentlemen? Well, let's drink to you, sir, as a sort of apology for interrupting your sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's very good, you know. <laughs> you did interrupt me. <laughs> I wanted to show off. I had seated them in the old man's room. And after all, in a way, this was a celebration, a token of my ingenuity. I had seated myself on top of the very spot under which I had hidden the body. We had one glass of wine, then another, and another. We were talking quite freely when I... when I heard it. Oh, won't you gentlemen have enough... Uh, what's that? What's what, sir? That noise. That beating. I don't hear anything. 
Anything wrong, Mr. Crowther? No, nothing. Nothing's wrong. Uh, have some more wine. I wish they'd leave. They were getting on my nerves. I had a terrible headache. And I seemed to hear a beating in my ears. They began to look at me queerly. And yet that sound increased. There was nothing I could do about it. It was a low, dull, quick sound. Like the beating of a drum. Where, where had I heard that sound before? They watched me closely. I paced the floor. I, I didn't know where the sound was coming from. Beat, beat, beat. Throb, beat, throb, throb. Where had I heard that sound before? I knew they suspected who wouldn't with that incessant beating that filled the room that seemed to make the very walls shake with its monotonous beat, that rhythm? Where had I heard it before? Where had I? I knew! I knew where I'd heard it before! Beat, drop! Beat, drop! Beat, beat, beat! Yes! I knew where I'd heard it before! It was the beating of the old man's heart! What's the matter, Mr. Crowther? Can't you hear it? Hear what, sir? Perhaps I can crush him out. What's the matter with you? What are you trying to do? Stop it from beating! Stop what, sir? Get out of here. Both of you! Get out of here! But you... Get out of here! <laughs> Can't you hear it? Can't you? I can stifle his heart, that throbbing heart. Can't you hear the throbbing? Can't you hear it? The only thing we hear is you, Mr. Crowther. I can't stand it. I can't. The continuous pounding will never stop till I tell you the truth. The truth about what? About the old man, about Lawrence. I did it. I did it. What did you do? I killed him. Under the floor. The body is under the floor and he stopped that beating. <laughs> Stop the beating of his guilty heart. <laughs> Always with me. Always with me. Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Listen. Did you hear it? Slow, rhythmic beating. 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 It's with me. It follows me wherever I go. The pounding of its heart. The pounding, the pounding, the beating, beating rhythm of his telltale heart. Be quiet! Be quiet! Be quiet! <laughs> Characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons living or dead is purely coincidental.